Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel again. I'm Daniel Chan. Today we are going to talk about some tips that will be really helpful for you to feel yourself alone. And before we talk about anything else, let's watch this short Instagram reel I shot alone for myself first. I just wanna be loved by you. Stand out alone in this whole town. Why you look that bit so fine? So if you've been following me on the social media, then you probably noticed I've been shooting a lot of reels and TikTok video recently. And I actually got a lot of requests and questions from the people on my social media asking me about how do I shot the video that you guys just saw and what are the tips for me to shoot this kind of video by myself alone. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys some tips not only can help you to make your one-man video production process become more efficient, but also can help you to make your final video look more cinematic and professional even you only shooting the video by your own. Now, the first tip we are going to talk about is gear. And depending on the type of video and what kind of shot you are going to shoot, you might need to use different tools to achieve your goal. But for me personally, here are the gear and tools I use to shoot my video alone all the time. And they really made my job become a lot easier, which I will explain the detail in just a second. And to shoot your video alone, of course you need to have a tripod and a camera. And the camera I use here is Sony S7S III. The main reason why I choose to use Sony camera or this camera particularly, not only because it can shoot 4 to 2 10 bit S log 3 4K footage, but also because the autofocus system of Sony camera is really fast and accurate. So if you only shooting by yourself and the subject is moving while you are shooting, it's most likely you will lose the focus when there is no one that can help you to pull the focus for your camera. So that's why using a camera that is good for autofocus is really important because it can help you to do more things and have more movement in your shot without losing focus. Another main reason I like to use Sony camera, especially when I only shooting by myself, is because you can connect your camera through the app to your phone or iPad. The app I use is called Monitor Plus. By using this app, not only your phone can become your monitor to help you to adjust your frame a lot quicker, but also you can control the camera setting and watch the playback directly from your phone. On top of that, you can also record the video directly from your phone without going back forward to your camera camera's location thousands of times and it will really save you a lot of time and make your job a lot easier when you want to shoot the wider shot and need to put your camera far away from your subject to shoot your video. Now there are an additional accessories I would strongly recommend for you guys to have it which is the camera cage I put on my camera and the cage I use here is from a small rig. The benefit you can gain from the camera cage is actually a lot. Not only you can buy different accessories to build a professional camera setup you want, but in our case here, even we don't have other people can hold our camera, but it can help us to screw our camera from horizontal to vertical on the tripod or sometimes if you want to shoot some shot that your tripod can fit in and you need extra tool to mount your camera, then the cage will be really useful for that. And for the tripod I use most of the time when I go out to shoot is KNF Compact SA2542. The thing I really like about this tripod is it can handle 10 kg of weight. So even you use bigger lens and have heavier setup on it, it can still handle it really well. On top of that, the highest it can go is almost 200 centimeters. And it also has the ability to put your camera really low. So no matter I want to shoot an over the shoulder shot or I want to shoot the shot from the really low angle, then this tripod can help me to achieve whatever the shot I want. And the other two things I will always bring with me are my RGB LED light tube and a light stand to help me to put my lights on. And the light I use is Yonor YN363 Pro. To be really honest, it's not the best light tube you can get from the market. But for the price point and the thing it comes with it, in my opinion, it's still a really solid option to choose and really easy to use. As we all know, lighting play a really important role to make our video look more cinematic and professional. Whether we use it as a key light for our subject's face or to create a color contrast in our scene, having a light with you, especially the RGB LED light, can definitely make your production value turn into the next level. And the last two things I will always bring with me are the anti-filter and diffusion filter. 
And for the people who don't know what this tube filter is, ND filter allows you to bring your exposure down when you still want to shoot your video for wide open f star to get that shadow depth feel look for your video. And for the diffusion filter, it allows you to get the softer look for your whole image and also the glowing effect for your highlights. But some of you guys might don't like this kind of soft look. So it's really a creative choice and you can choose whether you want it or not. But personally, I use the 80% of the project I shoot. Move on to the next tip, which is to find a unique point for your video. So since you are shooting alone, most of your shot is going to be on your tripod and be static. And since we don't have a lot of camera movement, in order to keep our audience attention without making them feeling boring, we want to do something creative or different to still make our audience to feel engaging and keep their attention. This unique point could be created from different perspectives, for example like the theme of your video, the type of shot you shoot, the lighting feeling you created, or even the location you choose to shoot your video. For example, for this reels I shot, I choose to use the object that people will feel related in their daily life as a topic like a burger or instant noodles or even a red roses but the point for my reel is to make these daily things look cinematic and on top of that I use lighting to create color contrast and use myself as an actor to add some story element in it so that when people watching my video even I don't shoot any cool transition for my shot but it can still look related and engaging for the viewer but there are really a lot of ways to make your video look more standout. You can create some cool transition shot or shoot some creative POV shot to make your video look more interesting. Or go to some places that has the most beautiful landscape to shoot your video. As long as you can find the things that is unique and make your video look more engaging and keep your audience attention, then that's the good way to use. Move on to our third tips, which is the lighting. So for the lighting over here, I put it into two points that you can more focus on while you are shooting alone. The first point is to utilize the practical light to create more depth in your image. And if you don't know what the practical light is, I actually made a video to explain everything you need to know about it. So if you want to learn more about the concept about the practical light, then I will put the links down below. And please feel free to check it out. But back to our topic today, simply to say practical light is any light that show up in your shot and even you only have one or two light to set up when you're shooting by yourself. If you know how to utilize the practical light for the environment you shoot, you still can make your image look cinematic. For example, if you see all the real I shot, you will notice I always put an additional light in the back of my image. No matter it's the street light, the building light, or the lamp. They all do the same thing for my shot, which is to create depth and layer for my image, and not make my image look flat. Especially when you shoot your close-up shot, when you open up your app start to 2.8 or 2 and you put the practical light in the back, then the shallow depth of field can create a blurry light leak in the back and make your image look a lot more cinematic. And move on to the second point which is to create a color contrast for your scene like I mentioned in the gear section earlier. I always bring my LED RGB light tube with me when I go out to shoot alone. And to make your shot look more interesting and creative, you can always create a color contrast in your shot. For example, if you watch my instant noodles reel, then you can notice there have a teal and orange color contrast I created intentionally in my image. And for me to achieve this look, I just simply turn on my warm stove light and I use my LED RGB light, set it to blue and make it bounce to the ceiling. Or for the beach reel you are watching right now, I shot it in the blue hour after the sunset so the sky looks blue. And the same comes I use my light tube to leave myself but this time I made the color looks red so that I can create the blue and red color contrast in my image. So as long as you can put more observation for the environment you are shooting and know how to use your light to create the color contrast with your environment, not only it can make your video look more eye-catching but also can make it look more cinematic and professional. Now move on to our four tips which is think about the editing before you go out to shoot. So before you grab your camera and go out, I would strongly recommend for you guys to think about what the video sequences is gonna look like for your final video. The last thing you want to do is to shoot some shot you think is really cool and you just keep shooting the same kind of shot. But end up when you are editing your video in the post, you realize your footage is not enough or your footage is hard to edit it together. 
And if you don't know how to do the shot list or don't know where to start, here I summarize one simple construction that you guys can follow to shoot the narrative reel like I made. And the construction is, for everything you shoot, you will need to make sure you get at least three types of shots for the same action, which start from the wide shot, medium shot, and close up. Wide shot help you to establish the tone and show the environment for your audience. The medium shot show the audience closer what our character is actually doing, and the close up shot help us to show the emotion and detail for our character's expression or the object that you want your audience to be more focused on. So take this reel I shot as an example. We start from the wide shot I walk into the scene, and start using my cell phone in the middle of the stair. Then we cut to the median shot to show our audience what I'm actually doing in case they can see my cell phone from the wide shot. Then we cut to the close up shot of me typing texting on my cell phone. And then close up shot for my face to show my expression. Then last, we cut back to our wide shot again to end this video. So basically for this video, all the shots you need to shoot is one wide shot, one medium shot, and two close up shots. And you can tell the complete story for your scene. And I actually apply this concept not only for all the reels I shot, but also for my narrative type of music video or a commercial project. So if you don't know how to make a shot list for your video, or don't know what shot you should start to shoot first, then I hope this concept can give you more clear idea how you're gonna shoot your video. Finally, the last tip we are going to talk about is adding camera movement in the post-production. So like we mentioned earlier, since we shoot most of our shot on the tripod, so most of our footage will lose static without any movement. And to make our shot look more cinematic and more interesting, no matter if it's a simple zoom in or zoom out that we do it in the pose, adding movement for your shot will be a really useful way to use. So if you compare the real I shot with and without the movement, then you can tell even we just add a little zoom in for each of my shot, the version with the movement just looks better and more cinematic than the one without the movement. And just by this simple trick, you really can make your video look a lot better. So next time when you are filming yourself, and if you think the footage looks too boring and want to make it look more interesting, then adding movement for your footage in the editing software is always a good way to make your video look more cinematic and high quality. And here you have it, I hope after this video you have more idea about how to film it yourself, and how to make your video look more cinematic even you only shoot by yourself with your camera and your tripod. The way I share with you guys today might not be the most accurate way to do things, but those are the ways I deliver time by time during my film production journey, and I find them really useful to help me to get the results I want, and I hope all these tips can also make your one-man production journey become much easier and efficient. So I hope you guys enjoy the video today and maybe can take something away from it. And if you like this video, please don't hesitate to click that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. I would really want to hear from you guys' experience from filming yourself alone. So please feel free to tell me what you think and comment down below. I will try to reply it as soon as possible. So it's the wrap for today's video. I'm Daniel Chang. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.